Bigger's better, bigger's better, bigger, bigger, bigger's better. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, no, it's not. It's not because we have the O1 XDM 1041 55,000 count digital multimeter. I'm gonna call it a bench meter. Dang it. In the spotlight. Whew. Oh my god, who was that guy? Anyway, what he said was totally true. In the spotlight, 1041, 55,000 counts of goodness. Thank you, Oan, for sending it in for this review. Honey, lock the door. Oan. Oh, uh. XDM, 1041. a small digital multimeter. Well, I'm going to call it a small bench multimeter because it basically is just that. A tiny addition to your workplace workbench that is more powerful than it looks. At least I hope so. Get a few things with the Oan 1041, starting off with those test leads. Hey, we saw the exact same leads in the previous review I did on the 2041. Definitely bigger in the hand and hey, decent leads. Also, you get your crocodile clips and you get this connector. Instead of the RS-232 connectivity, you've got that uh, ever so popular USB with that uh, printer out. And of course, you get your O1 manual. Oh yes, XDM Series 1000, the quick guide. 86.5 millimeters in height, 64 millimeters wide. It is a small bench meter. Oh, and it's definitely keeping things simple. Uh, in the back, we just have that out to your PC as well as the AC mains input. That's it, that's all. No other connectivity to speak that of. That nice power supply where it will go from 90 to 240 volts automatically. Now it does come with that line fuse, 250 volt, one amp. And it's really easy to replace if you happen to blow it. Take a screwdriver, give it a little push, pull and voila. There is your line fuse, really simple to replace. These fuses are a dime a dozen, they're everywhere. And yeah, nice, easy access. How would you like to win a brand new multimeter 2024? What a great way to start the year, don't you think? Well, courtesy of Oan, you can. Just simply leave your name, well, not your name, your, your call sign, comment below. You know how it works. Subscribe, of course, and hey, you're automatically entered to win. Good luck. Now with some DC accuracy, shall we? Uh, 5.0003, wow, beautiful. Once again, we have that gorgeous display here on the Oman, just like the 2041, the XDM. 1041, uh, 55,000 counts, uh, but man, crisp, crisp color display. Super easy on the eyes, and uh, I had the windows wide open a while back, and glare, definitely not an issue. A little bit of, uh, you know, reflection perhaps, but it is just so clear, so crisp that, uh, hey, no need to worry. So one of the best looking displays I've seen in a while on such a small meter. Now, truth be told, the smallest bench meter I have seen uh, that's relatively new was the uh, Zotec 5566 SE in front of us right now. And that actually looks pretty big in contrast to the tiny Oan. So this meter is really, really small. Another nice feature with the Oan, just like the 2041, the 1041 also supports data recording. Good stuff, up to 1000 points uh, is the maximum number of recorded points that you can have. And it's a manual or auto mode as well. So even though you're getting a smaller meter, uh, a little less functionality, at least they're not taking away your data logging and you can export your data to the software. Take a look at the back of the meter now. Apparently there is two versions uh, of this meter. So we're looking at the first version, well, obviously one of the versions, and you see we have our high powered mains as well as our communications uh, PC port. That's it, pretty basic, pretty sparse. Uh, another version also has a USB, USB type C port, um, basically DC mains input. And man, oh man, I wish I would have had that one. 
because for me, uh, in this incarnation, I really have a problem. This cord is huge. I mean, if you look at it, 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 it it's, it's too big for this bench meter. Oh man. So if you're gonna get this meter, um, definitely look at the one that's powered by a USB-C as opposed to a standard AC cord. Ugh. So here we go. We have both of these Oan meters, one on top of the other stacked if you want. And uh, yeah, look at that display, identical display, identical. Color, uh, saturation, uh, resolution, um, you name it, viewing angle, they are identical. So uh, no matter which one you choose, you're gonna get an awesome display. Okay, now we're gonna do a quick voltage showdown. Got both of the Owen bench meters and good old Mr. Fluke. Here we go. Up and away, sitting at 5.08 volts. 5.08 volts for the Fluke, 5.08 for both of the Owens. Excellente. Up, up and away. Hey, and what, let's increase resolution on that fluke. I think that's a good idea. There we go, 8.9, 8.9, and 8.9. Looks good, okay, up and away again. 13.9, four volts on the power supply. Oh, switching around, 13.9. So we're sitting at 13.94 volts. Look at that, 13.94, 13.9. Oh, I was so close, Mr. Owan. 9.3 and 9.2 for the 2041. Okay, up and away again. Now let's just max it out now, why don't we? All the way to the top, 32 volts. Let's see what happens. Okay, now we're maxed out at the most 31.97 volts. 31.97 for the O1 1041, 31.94 for the 2041, and 31.96 for Mr. Fluke. Good gracious. Wow, there you have it. So that little 1041 is definitely an accurate little bench meter. Good stuff. One thing that kind of aggravates me with this meter is the fact that because it's so light, so small, uh, when you go to press any of the buttons, you know, it, it just goes all over the place. So you literally have to hold it with your other hand to change the readings. And that is a bit of a pain, especially if they're really troubleshooting. I mean, it's just one extra step that you, uh, you don't want to do. Okay, quick look now at diode. I know I really don't think this is gonna have any issues because hey, it's plugged into the AC mains and all are being lit up. And finally the blue, and yeah, five out of five, which was to be expected. And no problem at all with diode mode. And Wilson diode mode, the 1041 is putting out 3.29 volts. Those default test leads, as you can see, have a lot of resistance. Yeah. So I'm gonna hit the rel, and let's see if that makes a difference. Oh yeah, certainly does. So I'm gonna check out this 0.5 of an ohm resistor. Let's see if we can get right down to that low resistance range. And doesn't look like it's gonna happen. Does not like that low. 0.5 of an ohm resistor, so it's uh, quite a bit of a ways off. Yeah, well, we tried, we tried. And just in case you're wondering, the XDM 1041 is running version 4.2 of the firmware. Like a typical bench meter, you can adjust the speed. Right now it is set for low, and you can have mid range or high range. So if you want more accuracy, normally you wanna keep that on the low to mid. If you're in a rush, put it on high. Look at continuity, stock default test leads. Wow. Oh my goodness, that is terrible. Oh, horrible. 
What is going on? Ah! Let's see if the uh, Probe Masters are any better. They can't be any worse. Probe Masters! Let's do a Hail Mary. Three, two, one. Oh, it's definitely better. Oh, yeah. Loud and latched. What a difference a Probe Master makes. Maximum output volume and continuity. A whopping 87.3 decibels. It's loud. So at this juncture, I'm pretty well mixed in terms of my overall uh, feelings on this little 1041 bench meter from Molon. Um, some things I like and some things I abhor. Anyway, let's take a look on the inside and see how they did. Already take a look at the inside now. Uh, interesting, a little Oan meter like this, but we have four separate PCBs that make up the internal assembly. Uh, we're looking right now at the power side of the board and as well over on the right, we have the communications. But we'll start off with the power and here we go. Um, fusible resistor over here in a varistor and looks like we have a suppression choke as well uh, all this at the input side so our power ac is coming in uh, from the other side another thing i like is the fact that we have these uh live and ground pins here that are separated uh, with these slots so uh, another good safety feature i love it i love the top it. as well we have uh, some smoothing capacitors and it looks like a choke to filter the output as well. I'm liking it, I'm liking it. Here you go, this is the uh, five volt, two amp, according to the PCB. So once again, it just shows you that, yes, you can definitely power this uh, with batteries. Like I said, there's two versions of this, two versions. So this is strictly the AC mains that also does come with a USB-C uh, rechargeable as well. That would be really interesting to see. Like as well with these is the fact that the PCB itself it's pretty thick, pretty chunky. Um, nice big fat traces as well. And this always bolds good for a longevity in the long term. Now if we go over to the communications side over here, not much going on really. Here it's a, a DB9 and uh, the serial is actually soldered in to the back. So, uh, you know, hey, I believe it's an SP202E as the, uh, the chip uh, powering this little device. But uh, yeah. anyway, once again, you know, I really hope Owan does something with the software because, man, oh man, it would just bring this elevated to a new level if we get this uh, communications going properly with the uh, meter and the computer right software. Now, taking a look at the uh, other two boards that make up internals here. And it's very interesting. So we've got what is an analog and a digital board and they're separated by it looks like a little bit of plastic a plastic inlay in between the boards and another good safety feature again because obviously uh, you don't want anything touching or you know shorting itself out i will say though once again uh look at those fuses fuses are unfortunately uh just five by 20s and look you know here they've given us that eight by 30 option for a fuse so why oh why actually i'm sorry that's a 10 by 38 10 by 38 we have here but it hasn't been utilized instead of giving us the five by 20s don't know why so i mean do i have yeah i think yeah hang on a second so you can see what a difference this would make in fact i think i'm going to do this um i'm going to see if I have any of these fuse clips and put on a couple of the nice big HRC fuses here and uh, you know do it properly because man what a difference that would make in terms of safety once again though we have that nice creepage here lots of space it's a small meter but they've given us a lot of space on the PCB we cheaped out again with the fuse it's only a glass fuse this is on the milliamp side here we've got a 10 amp 250 volt on the high current side uh, this is a one amp fuse and it's weird because if you look at the front of the meter it's 600 milliamps so it's not the proper fuse rating uh, that should be in this meter as well. So probably replace that with the 600 milliamp fuse that it's calling for. Curious as well here too, we've got uh, four resistors. And those are 2.5 mega ohm resistors. Um, so I guess they're creating a large uh, one single input resistor with these four because of that uh, high voltage rating we have on this meter. Very cool. Um, yeah, so let's give it a flip -a -roo. Check out the other side. Oh, 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 oh. Look at this. 
So um, right off the get go, the first thing I noticed is those inputs are soldered, soldered directly to the PCB. Look at that, look at that. Wow, so those are not going anywhere. Nice, big, beefy inputs uh, that are soldered directly to the PCB. You gotta love it. And you see what I mean about the thickness of the PCB? Take a look at that thickness. Actually, uh, 1.8 millimeters thickness of the PCB that they're utilizing. So that's gonna help things run cooler and uh, prevent wear and tear uh, a lot better than a thinner PCB. We all know that heat is the one thing that kills components. It ain't the cold. Okay, look at that uh, current shunt as well. Whoa, whoa. It's interesting because it's also got a, um, a wired insulator over it. Once again, probably for safety reasons, just because everything is so compartmentalized here and uh, they wanna make sure that nothing is gonna get burnt or overheated uh, when that current shunt is heating up. And that's a 10 amp shunt, so yeah, nice, nice. Um, only have one metal oxide varistor over here for the input protection, a couple of relays, and uh, yeah, that's about it for this part of the board. I like, I like, you know, I was impressed with Owen, like I said, in terms of the build quality, very decent for the most part. The utilizing is the uh, high contact 3131. 31. See it a lot, it's almost everywhere, so um. Tried and true, the multimeter I see. Alrighty, well, let's take a final look here. The last part of the board. And look at, we have a fab date on here, 2023 So this is a relatively recent incarnation of this bench meter. Here's that plastic inlay that I was talking about a little bit earlier. Over here at the top, we have a um, voltage regulator that uh, helps power the Hikon multimeter IC, which is right on the other side. And finally, over here, we have a uh, quad channel digital isolator, which aids in the communications as well for that Hikon Tech uh, 3131. So everything nice and neat, all encompassed uh, on this side of the board. And the fact that everything here is isolated just makes it really, really safe. Already gonna put everything back together, come back with my Closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the XTM 1041 from Oan. 55,000 counts of goodness. Yeah, I'm gonna recommend this, but with some reservation. You know, it's too bad that this thing had some flaws. One of the big peeves for me is software. That functionality just isn't there. Way too buggy and good luck trying to get it to connect. Oan, you really gotta work on this because that is a big selling feature, at least for me, when it comes to Benchmeter. What good is logging when you can't communicate with your PC? Another issue I have is the small size. In this case, because that AC plug is just so big, this thing constantly moves. If I was gonna pick this up, it would definitely be the USB-C version. That being said though, there is definitely a lot of goods about this meter. The build quality is exquisite. Externally and internally, I'm telling you, this thing is built like a million bucks. What I have is the fact that they've cheaped in terms of the fuses. Come on, let's do better than that. Otherwise, good all around quality and exquisite 55,000 count color display that is truly hard to beat. And hey, that accuracy, that's not to sneeze at either. Definitely an accurate bench meter. End of the day, you're getting a lot of bang for that proverbial Oan buck. And that, my friends, is a good thing. The Oan XDM 1041 gets a solid 3.5 out of five stars. Hey, that brings us to the end of the Oan Extravaganza. Hope you enjoyed it. That was been a fun week. Three videos and a lot of interesting stuff. Hey, Oan, keep up the good work. You really are doing a great job. Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.